All right, you saw in last episode, I finally got the MP45 supercharger installed into the MX-5, but we're not done yet, because in this episode, I've got another pretty important piece of kit to install, that being the intercooler. Alright, so why is an intercooler so important? Well, when you compress air, you generate heat. So when that supercharger is spinning quickly and cramming all that air into the intake piping, it is gonna generate a lot of heat. And if you don't do anything about it, your intake air temperature is gonna go through the roof and pretty quickly, which from a tuning perspective is a big problem. For one, uh, hotter air is less dense, so you've got less oxygen to burn in the cylinders, meaning less power. And two, from a more serious point of view, all that hot air can lead to a number of problems like pre-detonation, knock, things like that. So you're going to have to detune the engine to avoid damaging it, which again is not good. So whichever way you look at it, hot air entering the engine is going to limit performance. So what can you do about all this hot air? Well, you've probably guessed it by now by the video title, install an intercooler. So this intercooler you've already seen in episode, I think it was 17 of this series, where in some ways I already took care of the most difficult part of this install because I relocated a bunch of stuff in the front of the MX-5 so this thing would physically fit. I moved uh, the radiator, the power steering pipe, uh, the horns and a few more other things. So all I need to do in this episode in theory is make a couple of brackets to mount it in front of the radiator which is the ideal place for one of these air to air intercoolers to go which I'll explain why uh, in a later part of the episode. For now though let's get this thing installed. Right, so in order to get this intercooler installed, the first thing I need to do is remove the front bumper. So I've got the car jacked up and supported on some axle stands, so let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is pop off these three clips at the bottom of the air dam. So I'm going to use a flathead screwdriver and lever them up and out of position. Now they are quite fragile, these things, so go easy on them. Right, so still working in the air dam area above the clips we just removed are another two clips to get out and you'll need a stubby screwdriver to do this. So unscrew those clips and pop them out. So now I'm moving to work in the front wheel arches. So turn the front wheels to gain access to these four clips here and get them out. Now these are those 90 degree style clips which you only need to rotate a quarter of a turn before pulling them out. There's eight clips to remove here, four on each side. Right, with those clips now removed, I can peel back the inner wheel liner to gain access to this small 8mm bolt hidden up inside the front bumper, which you should be able to access with a small quarter inch ratchet and an extension. And there's two of these to remove, one on each side. Right, so with those bolts removed, I can now gently pull the bumper away from the car to pop loose a few clips holding it in place. Okay, now I'm gonna work under the car and remove another six eight millimeter fasteners which hold the bumper to the inner wheel liners. And there's actually only five to remove on my car as I've lost one. So I'm gonna use the same quarter inch ratchet with the eight millimeter socket to get these out. Okay, now they're out, the inner wheel liners are completely free of the bumper and the only fasteners now holding this thing to the car are up on the top here in front of the slam panel. There's four 10mm bolts to remove here, two on each side and then two plastic clips to remove as well which you'll need a screwdriver to remove. And once those fasteners are removed with a bit of manoeuvring this bumper can be taken off. Thank you. 
Right, now I've got the bumper removed, I have clear access to the area in front of the radiator where the intercooler needs to be mounted. And what followed here was a bit of measuring and cutting of some flat bar to make myself a bracket that would mount the intercooler, which looks like this. Now, where this attaches to the car, I'll get to in just a minute, because in addition to this, I also JB welded two small tabs on the bottom of the intercooler, which will allow me to bolt it to the air dam and further secure it in place. So now that I've got the brackets worked out, it's time to get the intercooler into the car and the main bracket at the top here is going to use the same fasteners as the bonnet latch mechanism. So I basically need to unbolt the latch, slide the intercooler bracket behind it and then get those bolts nipped back up. And then once I'm happy with the position of the intercooler, I'm going to drill the air dam and secure the lower half of the intercooler in position using two M6 fasteners. Great, with that taken care of, the intercooler is now securely in place in front of the radiator. And as I mentioned earlier, this has all been possible because of the measures I took back in episode 17 of this series, where I relocated the radiator lower and further back in the engine bay to create more space up front here. Right, so now I've got the intercooler in position, I can throw the front bumper back on the car and check out how this thing looks. Okay, here we go. Everything is back together and that intercooler is sitting just where it needs to be in front of the car because how one of these air-to-air -air intercoolers works is as you drive along, the air rushing through here, through the air dam, goes around and over this intercooler and that process will take the heat out of the intake charge passing through the intercooler. It's much like how a conventional coolant radiator works but instead of cooling liquid, this is cooling air instead. So basically, the hot intake charge from the supercharger will enter the intercooler via this port at the top here then as it passes through the intercooler it is cooled by the air rushing through the air dam at the front and will exit via this port here ready to go into the engine cooler and more dense which means we can make considerably more power. Now one final thing for those of you with keen eyes you may have noticed I've had to cut the slam panel which yes I've had to do to create enough room to get the silicone elbows onto the top of the intercooler. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail about the various pipe work and hoses I'm using because I'm going to cover that in the next episode. For now though I knew I was going to be using these elbows here so I've basically cut the slam panel to accommodate these using the angle grinder. So I may in future order some rubber trim just to place over the edge here to make it look a little tidier but for now it's functional and it's going to do the job okay we've got the intercooler in so that's it for this episode and we are now one step closer to supercharging this mx5 now at this point i'd normally do a quick budget update but i already included the intercooler in the budget back in episode 17 so the current spend still stands at 1674 pounds now the obvious next step is i've got to sort out the pipe work so i've got to get from the air filter to the supercharger from the supercharger to the intercooler and then from the intercooler to the throttle body which have about 90% sorted out right now as it stands so still a little bit more to figure out but I'm sure you'll see that in its entirety in the next episode so if you want to stay up to date with the build don't forget to subscribe to the channel and if you enjoyed the video please do give it a thumbs up thanks and I'll see you for the next episode